and welcome again to church. Um, it is good to, it's just good to worship again with you guys. I'm excited to just worship the Lord. Um, so welcome this morning to our online platform and yeah, let, let's worship. Let's worship God together. Oh. 
to see Worthy is the King who conquered 
not all we are. We give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you. Oh, we want you, God. So come and consume, God, all we are. We give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you. We give you permission, our hearts are yours, we want you, we want you, so come and consume God, all we are, we give you permission, our hearts are yours, we want you. Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus, that when you walk into the room, everything does change. Thank you, Jesus, that whenever we connect to you and we're able to to actually fix our attention and focus upon you and everything in the world fades away, everything does change. You make everything change. You change our perspective. You change our thoughts. You change our attitudes. You change our the way we feel. Jesus, you change everything. And we love you. We cannot get enough of you, Jesus. We love you so much. Hey guys, so we are in the final chapter, if you like, of our We Are Family series. And so today we're going to look at how we can grow in favour with man. And so over the last couple of weeks, we have been looking at what it looks like to live, to love, to serve and to grow like Jesus. And in terms of growing like Jesus, we broke it down from Luke 2.52, where we see that Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favour with God and man. And so we have kind of, in some way, looked at healthy habits that will help us to begin to live, love, serve, and grow like Jesus. So what I want to do this morning is I would like to spend a little bit of time in God's Word and look at how we can begin to grow in favour with man. And what I've done is I've broken this message up into three parts. And so part one we're going to get today. Part two I will release at eight o'clock tomorrow night on our YouTube channel and then on Wednesday night we will get part three and then essentially that will be the end of our We Are Family series. Then we've got Good Friday and we invite you to join us for communion and worship at eight o'clock again on our YouTube channel and then obviously we've got Easter Sunday next week so that's going to be really exciting. We're going to celebrate the risen king on Sunday morning together as a community online digitally and again we'll break bread on Easter Sunday as well and we'll have a time of worship and hopefully I will have a message for you that will speak life and love and hope into the heart of of your world and so Matthew chapter 6 verse 6 says when you pray go into your room Close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And I love the idea of us in this current season where we are at, being in a private place, being away from all of the distractions of what was part of our lives before, where we can actually intentionally begin to continue to develop our relationship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because the reality of it is, is this, is that growing in favour with man actually requires us to grow in favour with God. And what happens is this, is that if we take our position in the private place, we actually become equipped and empowered so that we can then be released to do the things of God in the name of God for the glory of God to extend the kingdom of God. And so if you take your place, if you take your position in the private place, God can then begin to use you in the public space and you can be a person of influence. You can have favour with man and the people around you so that you can extend the kingdom of God. And so we're going to look at 1 Samuel chapter 18 the first couple of verses and then we'll pop into 1 Samuel 17 as well but just for context uh, in terms of what I'm about to read this uh, passage comes immediately after the story of David defeating Goliath and we all know those of you who have been around the church for a while will know that David was a a young man who had a heart to honour God he turned up And he faced the giant, he 
used what God had put in his hand, which was a couple of stones, and then he pursued what was in his heart, which was to honour God and to be a man of God. And so we know that that's, that story takes place. And so this is what happens just after the story. And it says this. As soon as he had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Saul took him that day and would not let him return to his father's house. Then Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was on him and gave it to David and his armour and even his sword and his bow and his belt. And David went out and was successful wherever Saul sent him. So that Saul set him over the men of war. And this was good in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servants. So here we have an incredible example of how we can grow in favour when we are in the public place. We know that because of what happened and because of how David was victorious, he was then able to begin to develop healthy relationships with other people and the healthiest of them what we're reading at the moment is from Jonathan. But what I need you to recognize and what I need you to understand and what I need you to grasp hold of right now in this moment is that David's victory, David's battle, it wasn't actually the battle on the field that gained David his favor with the people around him. It was his discipline on the mountain. If we jump back real quick to 1 Samuel 17, verses 32 to 37, David has approached King Saul and he is telling King Saul that he's the man for the job, that he's essentially saying, look, I, I can do this. I can take on this Philistine and this won't be a problem anymore. And Saul's a little bit kind of like, not really sure about that. Um, and so David says this to Saul. He says, let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, you're not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him for you are but a youth. And he has been a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And when there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb. Sorry, and when there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and struck him and delivered it out of his mouth. And if he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and struck him and killed him. Your servant has struck down both lions and bears. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them. For he has defied the armies of the living God. And David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. You see, David understood that God was with him. And David understood that God would rescue him, that God would deliver him. And if he was positioning himself to be an ambassador for the kingdom of God, to be a representative for God, that God would use him, that God would protect him, and that God would give him victory. But David understood this because of everything that happened while he was on the mountain. He understood that in the private place, in the secret place, God had done great things with him. God had done great things for him. And God had also done great things through him. So in the private place, David understood the favour of God. 
And as a result of that, when he went into the public space, he was then able to demonstrate what it looked like to have the favour of God, which then, in turn, led on to him actually growing in favour with man. And so I love this idea of us in this current season where we are in lockdown and that everything that we do with God now will actually be in preparation for everything that God is preparing us for when we are released again to be around people so that we can grow in favour and extend his kingdom. You see, everything that happens in the quiet place is in preparation for the public place. And that everything that God does in the quiet place, in you, through you, and for you right now, is in preparation for when you are released into the public space. So church, look, I just want to encourage you to keep focused. I want to encourage you to keep pressing into the things of God. I want to encourage you to keep trusting God. And I want to encourage you to keep meeting with God in the secret place, in the private place, so that God can transform you, so that you can have a great relationship with him in such a way that you can have confidence and courage and boldness when you are released into the public place. Hey, everything that happens in private is in preparation for what happens in public. And so if we step out in faith, understanding that we have developed faith, in the private place, and I'm confident of this, that we can be people of influence, that we can extend the kingdom of God for the glory of God, empowered by the Spirit of God, in Jesus' name. So hey, I hope you're encouraged by those thoughts. I hope you are encouraged to get into the secret place so that you can grow in favour with God, so that then you can be a person of influence and grow in favour with man as well. And hey, don't forget this. If you are in need right now, that we are in a position to be able to help you as a church. And so if you have a pastoral need, please reach out and We will do everything that we can to bring life and love and hope into the heart of your world. If you have a physical need, if you need medication picked up, if you need shopping done, if your finances are low and you just need a little bit of help, then please reach out because we would love to to help you. We would love to support you. We would love to bring life and love and hope into the heart of your world because really, isn't that the heart of Oma Community Church to bring life and love and hope into the heart of the world, essentially. Although we are positioned in Oma to make a difference for the kingdom of God. And so please, reach out, send us a text, send us an email, make a phone call so that we can bring life and love and hope to the heart of your world. And hey church, If you would like to find out a little bit more information about how you can give online, how you can continue to tithe into the life of the church, please send us an email to office at omacommunitychurch.com and we will send you the information. We've got bank details. Uh, We've got addresses where you can send checks to. We've got lots of different options for you in terms of how you can continue to tithe into the life of the church, how you can continue to give um, in this season in preparation for what God wants to do in us, through us, and for us as a church and as a family and as a body 
in the days and weeks and months ahead. And hey, don't forget, Monday night, 8 o'clock, I'm going to give you the second part of how you can grow in favour with man. And then on Wednesday night, I'm going to give you the final part of how you can grow in favour with man. And then on Friday, we're going to have a time of worship together. We're going to break bread together. We're going to remember the sacrifice, that perfect sacrifice, that one sacrifice that was once and for all, the death of Jesus Christ on the cross that brought atonement for all, forgiveness for all of the world. Um, So anyone who would believe in him would not perish but actually have eternal life. So we're going to celebrate that. We're going to remember. We're going to give thanks. We're going to pray um, to Jesus, to God, and um, hopefully we'll be encouraged by that. And then obviously then we're back on Sunday for our online service where, again, we'll worship together and we will celebrate the Risen King. So I'm super excited for everything that's going to happen this week. Obviously, don't forget, we've got the Rhythms of Grace, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So we've got a Rhythm of Grace every day where you can begin to cultivate healthy habits. So Monday is motivational, Tuesday is teaching, Wednesday is worship, Thursday is a thought, and this week's thought comes from a great friend of mine, a guy called Terry Parkman, uh, and fantastic communicator, part of an incredible community called River Valley in, the, in America. Huge church doing incredible things. Thousands of people pour in to worship with them and to hear life-giving messages uh, on Sundays and, and, and throughout the week. So uh, you got to get locked in for that. And then Friday, it will be something of fun. I really hope that those of you who saw the fun Friday video that was put up a couple of days ago that it gave you a, a little bit of a chuckle that you know it made you feel good about yourself and that it was just a little bit of fun injected into your week so hey let's pray Jesus I thank you today that you are our Lord that you're our God that you're our Savior And I thank you today that forgiveness is available to all of us, irregardless of where we've been, irregardless of what we've done or what we haven't done or where we haven't went, that your forgiveness is available to to all of us. And so I just thank you for that today. I thank you for an online platform that allows us as a church to come together to glean from God's word to be encouraged by God's word. So I just pray, God, for everybody who is listening and watching right now, that they would feel the depth of the love that you have for them in such a way that they would be inspired to want to spend more time with you in the secret place, in their quiet place where they can encounter you and be transformed by you. And so I just ask this in your name. Amen. So hey church, I will be back on again with you tomorrow night at eight o'clock via our YouTube channel. So hey, stay focused, be blessed. See you tomorrow.